Hello, hello, and welcome to Melissa's Crafting Treehouse. You are here with me, Melissa Kerman, yours truly, with uh, Melissa's Crafting Treehouse for some paper crafting fun. Um, I am doing something a little bit different today. Uh, we're going to do some live creating. It's going to be super fun, playing with a technique and some variations on the technique. Um, before I uh, launch in, just a couple of quick little announcements. Um, don't forget when you're joining in to please share, tag, follow, like, subscribe if you're on YouTube, all those good things. Share the fun um, crafting goodness with your friends. Um, and please always comment, say hello, uh, let me know where you're from, um, what you think of what I'm creating as we, as we go, give me your feedback, all that. It's just so much fun to hear from all of you guys uh, as I uh, share. So I see people joining in. Um, again, just comment and let me know if you're um, who you are, where you're from, all that good stuff. Um, let's see what else. Okay, so a few quick announcements. Um, starting earlier this week, Stamp Up announced some new online exclusive products. Uh, those are available in the online store. Hi, Mary Beth. Yay. <laughs> so good to see you here. Um, uh, so uh, those are brand new and I, in my mind, I'm treating them as a while supplies last kind of thing because Stampin' Up's not making any promises for how long those things are going to be available, if they run out, whether they'll restock or not. So if you see anything in the uh, online exclusives, get it now. Don't delay um, so you won't be disappointed. Um, hi, Laura Lee. Hi, Melissa. Yay. Thanks for, uh, for saying hello. I appreciate that so much. Um, let's see what else. Two classes uh, going on right now, well, or pre-orders, shall, I shall say. Um, one is the Warmest Heart class. The RSVP deadline for that is Sunday the 12th. Um, cute, cute, cute projects uh, created by the Makers Mojo Creative Escape Design Team. There are five projects that go with that. Um, more details are in the links in the description of this video. Um, I'm also doing a stained glass techniques class, which is, I'm super excited about it. Um, it is also my club class. My team members get the electronic materials for free. Um, and it's just, it's just going to be a super fun class. So I'm going to show sneak peeks of those at the end. I think I may have shown some of them uh, previously, the three that we're going to make, but I have two more that I have played with. <laughs> that um, we won't make, but in the class, but I will provide all the information to make it in the PDF and I will demonstrate it in the class video. So um, there will be five different fun projects, um, ideas for the stained glass technique class, unless I come up with more between now and the actual class, <laughs> which you never know, I might. Um, let's see what else. Uh, that's pretty much it for the, for the little updates. Um, Hi, Wanda. Welcome from Georgia. So glad you, you're you mentioning where you're from. Oh, you love my flowers in the background. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So uh, a, a quick shout out to um, two of my team members, Trisha and Robin, sisters actually, who um, brought me those flowers. We actually crafted together the other day because uh, Trisha was in town visiting from, you know, a couple states away and uh, we get to play and they brought me flowers because my birthday is coming up. <laughs> my birthday is uh, next Monday, so that's always fun. I love, I love my birthday. It's fun. Yeah, cake. I can always count on cake. My husband's gonna make me a cake. <laughs> um, hi, Megan. Hi, Donna. Yay! So glad to see you guys here. All right, let's get started. So the technique focus tonight is the retiform technique. Okay, um, I have created one project to completion, and this video is actually going to be a, a two-part. Uh, you know, uh, event, if you will. Tonight is part one. Next Thursday night will be part two. So we're going to be doing some super fun creative play tonight with the technique, variations on the technique. And then next week, I'll actually be putting the cards together. So some live design. Um, uh, always a little bit exciting and maybe a little anxiety provoking too, but I think it's going to be super fun. I think you guys will too. So the technique again is called retiform. Now, what does that mean? So uh, I looked up the definition, you know, you could make a guess, but it's basically having the form of or resembling a net. <laughs> Maybe you'll, that'll make more sense when I show you the project. Um, I'm going to face my camera down and show you that. Um, did I say hi to you, Barbara? Hi, Barbara. Hi, Megan. <laughs> hi, Donna. I don't want to leave anybody out ever. Okay, so you may recognize this project because it was my project for the... Um, November Color Fusers Blog Hop, which was this past Monday. We go live every Monday, I'm sorry, every month, the first Monday of the month. Um, 
at 8.30 a.m. That's our go live time. Tonight's project is made with Magical Magical Meadow and the Magical Meadow Dyes. This is a bundle. You get 10% discount when you buy it as a bundle. And my project for the Color Fusers Blog Cup was um, made with it. So, And we're going to use that for all of the designs that I'm going to play with tonight. Um, so this is the project. The blog post is live. I will have a, a PDF tutorial for this project coming out in my newsletter next week. Um, and that is, okay, so retiform, right? Resembling a net. Does it resemble a net? Yeah, it's kind of a pattern of shapes and whatnot. Now, if you look it up, you'll see that there's lots of different ways to create the net, different patterns and whatnot. So that's what we're going to kind of play with tonight. Um, and uh, yeah, and I kind of, you know, took creative license with the, with the technique myself, just having some fun. So um, we're going to have some fun playing with it tonight. All right. So first of all, I'll just leave this here on camera for a little bit until I start getting inky. I have given myself a little bit of a jump start um, just because I think I'm going to be showing you. I'm going to be showing you a bunch of stuff today. And I have decided to do this in a couple of different color schemes just to make it fun. So what I have here is I've started my first piece. And I did like a, tri a triangle-ish sort of shape like I did on this one. And I've got masking paper on there, and I've done a couple of steps. So I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna do the same steps with different colors, but this just gave me a little jump start. So I'm taking off the um, masking paper, and the color I'm using here is one of my favorites, Starry Sky. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Polly. Welcome. And now, when I created this one. I basically took my mask and I kind of, I covered and I tried to cover it so that only about an eighth of an inch. So I was not covering an eighth of an inch, basically leaving a white gap in there. And it was kind of a pain in the butt. So I was thinking, what's an easier way to do that? So an easier way to do that would be to take place your mask, one of your masks, so that it's about an eighth inch uh, from the uh, inked line and then take another mask Actually, I want to do the other side. I want to work on this side. <laughs> okay, so this is my little my little trick. I've always liked to come up with easier ways to do things, especially when it's, you know, seems a little hard. Okay, so I've got my mask down. I've left a white gap there. And now I'm going to take my other mask and I'm going to cover it up so I know that I'm covering up exactly as much as I want. Isn't that nifty? Simple, right? So now if I were doing it like I did this project, um, I would then place my other mask on a different spot. Now I'm kind of visualizing my triangle right here. And I'm thinking, what shape do I want there? And that's what I would do, right? I would do that and then I would do the next step. But I'm going to show you a, a slight variation on this just for fun. So you could do this. You could um, leave that white gap there or you could create the white gap in a different way. So now Stampin' Up! sells this um, tear and tape, right? And it's pretty fat. I could use the tear and tape um, in the way that I'm going to now, but I don't really want it to be that thick. I just so happen to have this really thin um, tear and tape. So if you don't have this tear and tape, just do the method that I mentioned uh, previously. And this is live creating, so it's kind of an experiment. I have not done it this way before. And I'm going to start with just putting down a silicone craft mat. And I'm just going to take a piece of this uh, tear and tape. And I'm just going to mask to create my white line. Okay. I'm going to have to take care of that later, of course. But I'm just going to tear that off. And then I'm going to be now think about, and I can see my whole thing, where, what shape do I want to create next? I could create, and I, I'm envisioning that I want maybe three shapes on this side, okay? So maybe I'll start with a shape like that there at the bottom, okay? So now what I've got is that's, and of course I'm not using my mask because I'm going to use my tape, so got to remember what I've decided to do here. So take another piece of the tape. I honestly don't remember where I got this tape. Something online, probably Amazon. Okay, so we got that. Now let's now let's 
actually take our mask and we're going to cover that spot because we don't want to get um, ink on the other side. So we're masking off an area right here. All right, let's put it on our paper now. Now I'm going to work with a color combination, three different colors here. And I decided I wanted to have garden green in all of the variations I'm going to do today just for fun. Um, and I'm bringing in two other colors. So Starry Sky and Orchid Oasis. Um, this one was done with Garden Green, Real Red, and Cherry Cobbler. We're going to go back to that one in just a bit with one of the variations that I'm going to play with tonight. All right. So we've got this area to work with. And what I'm going to start with is... What color do I want to do there now? Hmm. I think I'm going to do um, the Orchid Oasis, okay? So decisions as we go. This is the anxiety-provoking part. <laughs> Making choices as I go. Okay, so I'm actually going to use a blending brush, and I'm going to add just a little bit of color to... Oh, and of course, this is exposed, so I have to cover that up too, right? Because I don't want to get what I'm working on now onto that part. So just doing some Orchid Oasis, kind of a trying to get it sort of light. You can see I got a little bit kind of dark right in there, but just a light shade of it. Then I'm going to take my embossing buddy, tap it all over, make sure there's uh, no static or stickiness on there, wetness. And then I'm going to take another one of my images from the set. I got a couple to play with here. And I'm going to heat emboss that those images. So, verse mark. Okay. So I'm going to ink this up. I love this image. Stamp. And it's clear, so I've got to kind of peek in there and take a look at what I got. I know you guys can't see. I'm going to come in at different angles just to keep it interesting. All right. So there's that. Now I'm going to bring in my clear embossing powder. Got a handy little spoon in there. Hi, Sharon. Welcome. Glad you made it. Hi, Paula. I haven't seen her in a while. So glad you're here. All right. So um, I'm just going to tap on some clear embossing powder. So I know when you guys, you guys may um, watch me and not comment, but if you don't comment, I don't know you're out there. So it's like you haven't been there. <laughs> Maybe you have been there, Paula, and I just didn't know it. All right. So I just got some clear embossing powder on there and I'm going to go ahead and heat it. So when I was thinking about my variations tonight, I realized this version, and the, the card that I made for color fusers, took a long time to make. Multi-step, each little quadrant is multiple steps and multiple layers and then all the different shapes. So I came up with some simpler um, options, um, which I'll show you after we do these. Okay, so. There is my heat embossing is done. And now I'm going to take uh, either the same or a different image. Maybe I'll do the same image this time. Same ink color, Yorkit Oasis. And I'm going to stamp some of those same images right over the top. Mm, where do I want to do this one? And I can go right over the heat embossed images if I want. And I can do second inking if I want. So there's that. Let's see. And it, by having the heat embossing in the background, by using the, the um, I'm just working on different angles here. Uh, the full inking and then the second inking. It's just going to give me a lot of dimension and depth to my piece. And it's one of my favorite things to play with is an emboss resist, which is what this is called. 
All right, so I've got some images in there. Now I'm going to grab my blending brush again, and now I'm going to go over it. Now there's ink sitting on the surface of anything that's heat embossed there, and I can rub it and it's going to come off with my um, blending brush to some extent. But what I'm trying to do here is I want to now bring out those images that are heat embossed. So those are, uh, they've got a little bit of color underneath because I added a little bit of color there and there too. There also. And then once I add some color, it's going to make them pop. So let's do that. So I'm going right over the heat embossed shapes. Now, just take a quick look at that in comparison to over there. And it's starting to look super cool. You can use small or large blending brushes. If you use the small ones, it just gives you a little bit more control over where you're putting it, especially if it's a small area. All right, so check that out. So by heat embossing, I basically locked in the color that was down below underneath it, um, sealed in there, and it's a, a lighter shade of this same color. And now I've really got one, two, and then three for the stamped off images, uh, shades of that same color and lots of dimension. And I love that. Okay, so as a final little step, I'm going to take um, a paper towel with a little bit of water on it and just wipe off any excess that might be there. You can see there's some excess. So that's brighter than that one or that one. It helps it, you know, pop even more, depending on how much color I have down below. So isn't that pretty? I think it's so pretty. I love it. Hi, Cindy. Welcome. Um, let's see. Okay. So we're finished with that uh, panel. Now, I also am realizing that because I have that tear and tape there, it might have some ink on, ink on it. I'm just going to wipe that off a little bit extra on there because that is sort of a shiny, smooth, um, non-porous surface to some extent. And if I don't wipe it off, it might get on something else. Okay, so let's do uh, another panel on this. So that is number one and number two panels done. Now, the Orchid Oasis and the Starry Sky look kind of similar, don't they? But, you know, that's what it is, okay? All right, and I love both of these colors. Um, maybe I have to do the Starry Sky a little bit darker next time I do it. Okay, so next quadrant. Now I have to decide what do I want to do. I know I want my next quadrant to be green, and I get to decide kind of my shape. So do I want it to be another triangle like, like that? Do I want it to be maybe something a little bit different? Uh, so if I do that, it kind of all sort of moves in that direction. I don't know if I want to do that. Let's do this. This is a little bit different. Now, again, I'm going to use the tear and tape and sort of deciding on my size, but that's kind of helping me block it out and see how much I want to cover. So now I'm going to grab the tear and tape, just grab a little piece, and I'm just eyeballing that general shape and covering that. Okay, let's tear that off so it doesn't stick to something it's not supposed to. Okay, so next, let's go ahead and mask. Now I have three sides that I need to mask on. I've got these little post-it notes that I used when I did my first card. And I'm going to use a big one instead of a little one just to make sure that I cover all this area and don't end up overlapping by, by chance or by accident. Okay, so we're going to do the whole process again. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start with our garden green. So that's the color up now. And again, a little bit of a light layer of the green. Oop, losing my light here. I could leave it white just as an, you know, I, I could skip this whole step if I wanted to, but I want a little bit of color in behind those heat embossed images. So that's why I'm doing this. And now I'm just doing some darker color along the edge just because I think it looks good. Okay, so next image. 
Next image, let's do, let's do this one, okay? And I'm gonna pull in my embossing buddy, which is here somewhere. <laughs> A lot of things disappear when they're like right there. It has to be right in front of me. And I have to use the embossing buddy because otherwise I'll get specks of powder where they don't belong. Oh my gosh. It's literally got to be like right in front of me. <laughs> I don't know how this happens. I really don't. Those of you who actually do Facebook lives, you might understand that it was literally here one second ago, right? We're just going to have to see what happens. Oh, you know what? I might have a second one. Of course, it's not in there. It's going to appear. Ah! There it is. I found it. It was underneath my version of art. <laughs> Crazy, right? Okay, so let's do the embossing buddy on there. Crazy how that happens. Let's see how fast we can move through this one. All right, so got that reverse marked. And then come in. Again, from a different angle, that's how I like to do it. So there's some variation in the look and in the shapes. Okay, all right, got that. Let's try not to cover up the embossing bunny this time. Okay, I'm bringing in my clear. So I don't know how the weather is for you guys. It's fall. I've been really celebrating the cooler temperatures. And, uh, but today and yesterday, and I think tomorrow, 80 degrees here. Like, oh my gosh, it's fall. Quit it. <laughs> it's been, uh, you know, like 30s, 40s at night and some 50s during the day, 50s, 60s, 70s. Those are my ideal temperatures. Get into 80 and it's like, no, thank you. Especially not in the fall. <laughs> Crazy, right? Okay, now we'll go ahead and heat emboss this. You probably noticed that I took my um, paintbrush and just wiped off some of the embossing powder that was on my post-it notes, uh, just because, keep it a little neater. So for tonight, I have three different variations to show you. And because this is kind of on the time consuming side, um, I'm not sure how much I'm going to finish of each of these because I don't want to keep you here all night long. Um, oh, what am I doing? I have one more step to do. So um, I'm going to kind of decide based upon the time. It's already 723. Uh, I wanted to do some of each of the methods to show you and then I'll finish some of the other panels off camera. That was my thinking. Um, but, okay, so, because we're really, we're only on method number one at this point. Okay, so now I've got my green, and I've got my same stamp, and I'm actually going to stamp some of those images before I do my additional uh, adding of the blending, with the blending brush. Okay, so, one... Two. I love this stamp set. I don't know if anybody else is in love with it like me. <clears throat> and this Magical Meadow. Great title too, right? Now, um, <clears throat> I think I'll do a stamped off image or two as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, I think that's enough. All right, now we'll come in with our blending brush and remove that color from on top of... Well, I'm actually adding color to the heat embossed shapes. Okay, let's bring it up to the camera again so you guys can see the before and after. So there's the before I'm adding the ink, there's the after I'm adding more ink over the heat embossed shapes. That looks like a... It looks, yeah, like a tropical forest or something. Uh, 
Oh, you lose things on your desk all the time, Barbara. Is that what you were referring to? I have a feeling that's what you were referring to. All right. So now I got my paper towel again, my spray bottle again. I'm going to pick a clean spot, not my purple spot. Make sure that I don't get purple where the green is. And I'm just going to wipe that off to clean it up and make sure I'm wiping over the tear and tape as well. Okay. Cool, right? Isn't that pretty? I think it's so pretty. I love it. Okay. So now I get to remove my masks. Let's see where we are now. Okay. So now we got three of our who knows how many panels we're going to do. Definitely need to do more green. And okay, let's see. So what I'm thinking is I, I need maybe three green spots. I've got a lot of that purple. Kind of I don't know if I like how the balance is ending up. But I'm thinking I want some green over here, maybe like a tiny little bit of green over there. Something like that, just so that I have three spots of green since so much of this is the, the um, starry sky and the orchid oasis. Um, but again, hmm, now I'm conflicted here. Because <laughs> I could spend the rest of the night doing just this piece. But let's do let's just do one more green section because this really needs a lot more green, I think. And let's see what I want. I think we'll do it like that. And again, I've got my tear and tape. Oh, it's the wrong size. Oh now my <laughs> There's the tape. I lost the, the small tear and tape. Oh my lord. Okay. So I actually need to mask on, I need to put a piece of tear and tape on this side first. So what I'm going to do after I finish all of these little panels is I'm going to remove the backings of the tear and tape. And I'm going to heat emboss directly on the heat, the tear and tape sticky. So it's going to be what the heat em, the embossing powder sticks to. All right, and then I'm going to get the shape that I want here now. I'm doing something like that. And There we go. That's my, what I've committed to shape wise. Okay. So on with the masks again. See how quickly I can do this one. A little bit of green and now this shape has green on it. So I'm going to go ahead and I need to heat emboss first. Let's see. Do I have another image I could use? Let's see what we got here. Okay, I'm going to use this image. It's also the one that I used in the middle, but I need one that's clean and I don't want to take the time to clean. So I'm going to do my embossing, buddy. I'm using this image here. We'll see how this turns out. I love this image. I think it's probably my single favorite one in the set. All right, heat embossing. So you can see this takes a while to do. Labor of love. <laughs> and this will be the last panel I do on this one, just so that I can show you the other methods. going to use the same image I just heat embossed with the green. Garden green is what I'm using. 
over the top. All right. Okay, now my green inking. Let's bring out those heat embossed shapes. And you might notice that the images that are stamped look like they're in behind the heat embossed shapes because the ink is resisting where the heat embossing is. Okay, so let's wipe that up quick. All right. We've got green on there. I'm worried I'm going to get it where it doesn't belong on that Tarrant tape. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, so that's looking a little bit more balanced. I still need a little bit more green. So much purple, right? In my mind, I want a third green one, but I'm going to play with that a little bit more. I'll do that off camera so I have time to show you the other ones. And um, yeah, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so that's method number one. So that's a lot, right? It's a lot, a lot of time, and I've only done about half of it. <laughs> so we're going to move on to the next method, which I think is another fun alternative. And we're going to start with a piece of a quarter sheet of cardstock, just plain white cardstock. Clean this up a little bit. We won't be doing any heat embossing for this next one. And I've just got a, square, a rectangle piece here that I uh, measures one and three quarters by three. You can be any size you want. It's too big. It's a little bit hard to get kind of a pattern on here. But um, this is a little bit smaller than one of the other ones I did. I'll show you that one in just a minute. So I'm going to take this piece and put a little bit of um, temporary adhesive on the back side. And I'm just going gonna, gonna to place it on there at an angle. I'm going to take a Sharpie, black Sharpie. This one is kind of a semi-pointed one. It's not super pointy, but not super fat either. And I'm just going to go around the edges of my rectangle. And I'm going to pick that up. And then I'm just going to start fiddling with adding the same shape to my piece. No. Hmm. I got that a little bit. Okay, now I don't want that. I want it to just be lined up right there. Didn't quite line it up. Okay, it's going to be good enough. Okay, now another one right here. Let's see what else. How about right there? See, this is very scientific, of course. Go like... That. Hmm. So there you go. <laughs> so that's uh, doing it with a thick Sharpie. You can also do it with a thinner Sharpie, okay? Making your black lines. And I have one that I started. So I'm gonna show you what I did with that one. So for this other one, I used a two by three and a quarter inch um, rectangle. And I have already started my piece. I did it in um, uh, the red and the green color scheme. So I'm going to continue with that. I'm going to do this panel, and then I'm going to show you uh, how the whole thing looks. Okay, so um, now for this one, I decided instead of heat embossing to make it a little bit simpler, I would I just realized, okay, what did I decide I wanted to do that in? Yes, the, <laughs> the 
I had thought about this and then I forgot what I was doing. Okay. I think I'm doing the red, the real red. So I've got my jet black stays on and I'm going to use one of the images I haven't yet used. This one right here in the set, the berries. And I'm going to stamp some images and I'm going to use first and second inking. So I've got my black outline and that'll go nicely with um, the black stamping. Yeah, so good question, Kathy. Can you just do the stamping? Well, of course, uh, you can, of course. Um, I think uh, you just get a little bit less dimension uh, with the three layers, the heat embossing uh, in the, the clear or the light green that's in the background, and then the dark green, and then the lighter green. If you do stamping off, it gives you three shades of the color, per, so, so to speak. So it gives a lot of dimension. It's all a matter of taste and how much you want to be bothered with it, right? So for this one, I'm using just black and I'm going to do full inking and second inking. And that way I'm going to get two shades of color, if you will, um, instead of three and in black. And I'm sure it's also going to be beautiful. So you're going to see. It's part of why I wanted to show you multiple methods for doing this and variations. Okay, so we've got first and second inking on that one. And I'm going to add color to this as well, but it's not, I don't need to do it ahead of time because I'm not, there's nothing going to be underneath it, right? I'm not trying to do the heat embossing part. And again, I want this going in a different direction every single time. And let's do a stamped off one right there. Um, and another stamped off one over here. Also a different part of it. Okay. So now this one I'm doing real red. And that's over here. Got my blending brush. I'm going to do it darkest against the edges, kind of fade towards the center, taking some color off of my brush so that when I do the center, it'll st it will actually be lighter. And I kind of got a little empty spot there in the middle. <laughs> Maybe that's where a sentiment has to go. We'll see. There's always a way ways to work around it. All right, so that is so simple, right? Only two steps instead of, I don't know how many I did, four or five on the other one. So let's take off these other pieces so you can see what I got there. So that's what I have right now so far. Now, now what next? I'm going to do an, a green one here. So let's go ahead and bring in my green post-it notes. And um, you can see course those lines are super thin right because I use the thin sharpie but it still has that separates the various colors and probably need to clean my stamp because I think I used it for yes I used it for green and it needs to be black okay just gonna grab my scrub and do that on camera I wanted to use all the same stamps so that we could limit the variables of what, you know, what I'm changing. Just so you could really see, um, compare them. All right, so now I got my black. That same image I just used a minute ago. Let's do a full ink, second ink, and another second ink. This one's fast, right? Because it's just straight up black. Yeah, move some of my things out of the way. All right, and now I need my green. And when I do this, I'm just trying to think about the balance, color balance, where I'm placing them. Right. 
super easy. That's a nice little quick one. And then last but not least, we'll do one more. And that will be Cherry Cobbler. We'll do that over there in the corner. And yeah. What image do I want to do? Before I cover stuff up, I think I'm going to do that image because I haven't done that anywhere uh, nearby. And I really only need one post-it, but let's cover up the sides so that I don't by accident get the wrong color on there. And I'm going to do this one, which needs to get cleaned. <laughs> Oh, I was going to do that image, wasn't I? Where did I put that? Yeah, I have to do that one. It's a small space, so I'm thinking I want a smaller image in there. Could do both, of course, but there's not a lot of room to play with here. All right, there's my little little bit. And that one is going to be Cherry Cobbler, which is over here. And I've got a different blending brush for each one. Yeah, that's what I use for that one. After I do this little section, I'll be done with this piece. Okay, now I had in mind I was going to show you a third color scheme. Um, comment and let me know. Do you want to stick around to see a third color scheme before I uh, before I finish up, or um, would you rather I either not do it or do it off camera? Let me know what your thoughts are. So the third color scheme that I had in mind. So this is what we got so far. That one, and there's my purple one. These are all ones I'm playing with. And then the third color scheme was going to be um, crushed curry, lemon lime twist, and garden green. So again, I wanted to have garden green um, as the unifying color for all the designs just for fun. <laughs> so maybe you can stay. Donna, you says go for it. All right. <laughs> love you guys. Die hard crafty friends. Gotta love that. Okay, so I'm going to close up my reds. I'm not using those anymore at the moment. So I think this is the first time I've done anything quite like this in the way of just kind of crafting as I go and trying to show you a bunch all at once. Um, so it's a little bit of an experiment for me as well. All right, so I'll set those off to the side. So I'm going to use this piece here to do my yellows, my yellow, my lemon lime twist and my green. Now just to kind of quickly reset, I'm going to clean a few stamps over here because, uh, because I'm using all the same stamps. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that they're clean. All right, so there's that. And actually, now that I think about it, I'm going to do black and I just did black. So I'm going to do the same basic idea with the black images, but vary the um, the color that I uh, stamp in the or blend in the background. So we still need masks. I can use my green masks. I've got a couple of green masks. Where's the other ones? Well, if we need more, we'll grab some. Okay, so I got like a million post-it notes, so that's what we'll work with. So I'm going to start with this center one. I'm not heat embossing, it's actually a whole lot faster. I'm kind of, uh, it's gonna be inter interesting to see if I like the thin black line or the thick black line. What do you guys think you're gonna like best? Hi, Bev. <laughs> How sweet. A wizard, really? <laughs> That's such a sweet compliment. 
Um, I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. So stays on. Got my masks all set up. My green right there. What color should I start with? I think I need to start with the green. And let's go ahead and do the same image that I was doing in the center. Maybe I should do something different. I should do something different. Let's do a different image in the center. Let's do this one in the center. All right. So now I got my stays on. I'm going to use this image right here. I'm going to stick with that first inking and second inking. And then we'll add some color. Ooh, love that. Liking it already. <laughs> Barely even started. Now, let's grab my scrap paper here. I think I have a clean surface underneath. All right, you guys are too sweet. Okay, ooh, so pretty, I love it. Okay, I think I need a third, something that's a little bit more of the full inking. Don't want any, okay, that's gonna do it. Okay, we're bringing in our green. Keeping track of where I'm putting things if I throw it aside. <laughs> Start as part. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I got my garden green. Let's bring it in. I just noticed I've got a little section right there that's going to get ink on it. It doesn't belong. On this one, I'll try to leave a little bit more white space. Less is more, like they say, right? Okay, so there we got that. I'm going to take all those post it notes off. And I like to keep post it notes by color just in case I end up, I don't want to get the colors where they don't belong, and sometimes they'll kind of bleed through the back side. And uh, that looks kind of cool, doesn't it? Just like that. Kind of liking that image more than I more than I uh, was thinking that I would. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and do this one right here. And it's okay if you cover over some of the black line too. And I think I want to do, let's see, which color do I want to do? Either the yellow or the lemon lime twist. Hmm. I think I'll do the crushed curry. Okay, so that's what we're going to do next. Thinking it up before I do my stamping. Decide which image I want to use. Yellow. Which one should I use? Let's do this one. Make sure it's actually black ink. I don't even know. I think it is. I'm clean it just in case. <laughs> All right. Back to the black. I love this image actually. So I'm going to do a little bit of a sort of bouquet, I guess, for lack of a better way to describe it. Like that. Okay, did anybody else comment? Who else loves this magical metal set? Just love it. Love it. It's, it's kind of an interesting set. Now, I also really like these forest images, but they're kind of tricky when you work with these images because they're big and those are so subtle. But I've done some cute things with these tiny little images, made tags with them, actually. I thought about incorporating them into these designs, but it hasn't happened so far. It's like I totally forgot that they were there. Okay, we're going to go now this direction. I 
maybe I'll just leave that edge without anything. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, so now we're doing our crushed curry. Coming in from the sides. And I'm going to, again, try to force myself to, um, <laughs> to uh, have more sort of white space in the center. Just going to stop myself from doing too much. Okay. It's hard to stop sometimes. Okay, so there's our yellow panel. Ooh, I'm liking this. Anybody else liking this? I like it. Okay, so now we're going to do the lemon lime twist. Again, now I've got another set of post-it notes. I'll go back to using these for each of their respective colors. And I want it in this spot right here. Now, Lemon Lime Twist is a really interesting color. I don't know if anybody else feels that way. It's like, I'm not really 100% sure how I feel about it. <laughs> it's like sort of a yellow, sort of a green. Uh, <coughs> we'll see what we think. Now, my little secret when I'm trying to pick colors, color combinations, and I've probably shared this before, so it's probably not much of a secret, is I will take my ink pads and just, I'll just go like that. And put them all next to each other and kind of want the yellow up there with the green. I'll go, hmm, what do I think of that color combination? If I like it, then I go with it. If I don't, then, you know, start with something else. All right. I keep doing that. Okay, so now I got to pick an image again. Which image shall we do? Let's do the berries this time. And we need our black. Yellow and green is not generally a color scheme that I go for very often. So this is a, a kind of experiment, if you will. Kind of fun. Now these other ones I'm going to stamp off. Have a fresh stamping off, if you will. See, I'm kind of turning it to get a good position. I don't want it to be the same position as the others. Oh, geez. Can't seem to get it where I want it. Okay, let's do that part. Looks like it's different. And one more stamped off. Up. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Decisions, decisions. Not that. Not that. Ah, I like that. Okay. Now we're coming in with our lemon lime twist. And again, I'm going to try to keep the center. Ooh, that's looking actually, look how pretty that is. I'm liking it here. I always like the edges to be darker than... Anywhere else gives it a little bit more, more of a frame, if you will. I like that. Okay, good. You can see how much faster this one is than when you try to do the heat embossing. But there's a place and a time for place for everything. I'm liking that. It's an interesting combination, isn't it? Okay, so now, next decision. Oh, boy. <laughs> Live creating takes a long time, right? <laughs> It's almost eight o'clock, guys. Glad you're sticking with me. Thanks for sticking with me. So, um, hmm. What do I want next? I think I need a, a yellow. I'm going to do a yellow over here. And I'll stick with the same images just to keep it simple. So those images, this one right here. Can we actually get this one done? I'm going to do like speed stamping here. That 
that was a stamped off image, but you wouldn't really know it, would you? It's so dark. Okay, we'll stop there. Grab my yellow. Is that my yellow? That's my yellow. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes they don't look like you think they're going to look. Okay. Again, dark on the edges, keeping some light towards the center. All right, so you guys can kind of, I don't know if you guys can see, well, what a mess this is. My desk looks like such a mess. <laughs> All those post-it notes. Okay. All right, let's take this one off. Now, we need a, a green up in there. There's my yellows. Let's go back to the green. Start with our black. That's probably enough. All right, and back to the green. So when we're done today, we're going to have three pieces that are mostly done. <laughs> and then I'm going to get to create a card with them. And my plan is to come back and show that part of it next week. So uh, two parts, doing this in two parts. So now this one needs to be the lemon lime twist. You guys hanging in there with me? <laughs> you like the white in the center? Oh, I know. Me too. Me too. It just adds, um, I don't know. It, it's another way to kind of get some dimension in there, right? Because we only have the black as opposed to the heat embossing and the stamping and the stamping off and all that. So it's kind of nice to have that light in the center. I think it helps. Okay, what am I doing? Oh yes, lemon lime twist. This uh, this project is making me like lemon lime twist more than I think I did before. It goes really well with these other colors, I think. All right. <laughs> thank you thank you Mary Beth <laughs> you're part of the reason why I'm doing this just saying I knew you would like it if anybody <laughs> okay so let's see where to put so there's going to be a yellow here I think I need to do a yellow here hmm. I need one more I need another green I guess we'll do Ah, uh, hmm. Lemon lime twist. I don't really want to do the green there. <laughs> Thinking out loud here. Maybe the yellow has to be here. The yellow has to be here. That's what it has to be. Okay. And that way kind of keeps the colors sort of separated, if you will. And have a balance. I just need to add that little bit of black in there. So we have a border. And... Yes, I'm doing yellow. So here we go. This is me thinking out loud as I craft. 
I do this by myself too. Talk to myself. Anybody else talk to themselves when they craft? <laughs> okay. It's my yellow. We're in the home stretch here. Hard to keep some white in the middle on this one because it's so darn tiny. But I think I did it. Okay. Now I need my lemon lime twist over here. So it's opposite the other lemon lime twist. Okay, so anybody else commented on how they feel about lemon lime twist? Anybody else like it, not like it? <laughs> Laura, you talk to yourself all the time. <laughs> I love that. I know your stamping needs, Mary Beth. Yes, they're similar to mine. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, let's see, lemon lime twist. Probably many of the rest of you too. Um, okay, let's see. That's not a lot of room to, to work with here, so. Uh, let me put on that edge. Okay, so yes, here's the hard part is remembering what I'm doing from one to the next. What color am I on now? Okay, lemon lime twist. Anybody else like lemon lime twist? or have mixed feelings about lemon lime twist or now love it like me because I'm playing with it. <laughs> All, right. All right. So one more green. I am loving this. I really am loving this. The more I do it, the more I love it. Isn't that fun? I might even like it better than the purple one that I did. And usually the purple is my go-to. Okay, I'm doing green and I'm doing this image. And we're just gonna do, hmm, not a lot of room to play with on this one. Ah. Okay. And my green brush. Ooh, this is a pretty tiny little spot with a big brush. I'm actually really liking the small brush. I have more big brushes than small brushes because they came out before the, um, the, the little ones. But now I want more little ones <laughs> for fine detail stuff. All right. There we go. Let's get rid of some of this stuff. Bring in the pieces that we played with. Clean up the space just a little. Okay, so we got, that was the first one we played with. And that's got the tear and tape in between. I'm going to finish that off camera. Maybe I'll make it look better than I like it now. And there is my, my red and green, which is similar to the one that I did, well, color scheme wise on this one. And so there we go. That's what we got so far. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that off camera. Now, one of the things I'll, I'll do, maybe I'll take some steps with some of them to move along so that we, um, we can, we can put cards together um, next week. I hope you guys will come back and join in to see what kind of cards I make with these um, lovely little pieces. Now, you might notice that they're a lot bigger than the focal piece I have here. And I did the thing that I love to do, which is, especially with this kind of technique, make a big piece so I can trim it off and I'll have some lovely little scraps to use for inside my card. Now, I also just noticed I'm I've got a tiny little bit right there that needs, um, that's going to get some green, but I won't do it here. I'll do it. I'll do it off camera <laughs> because it's almost done. Um, and then this one, I think what I'll, well, I'll probably, maybe I'll finish the quadrants and then take the next steps with that one next time. We'll see. Anyway, we're going to finish up next time. Um, you really, really like the first, the very first one. You mean, this one, the one I actually finished it, finished. 
The speed of the ones with the black. Oh, I see. You like you like the one with the triangles, but you like the speed of the ones with the black. <laughs> Look neat with some browns, orange with the jungle theme. Yes. Yeah. Fun. So many fun ideas, right? So, um, you know, the masking with leaving a space, the masking with using my tear and tape, and then creating uh, not just not triangles, but rectangles. Now you can see again, the size of these rectangles are smaller. I use the two and three quarter for that one. And somewhere buried under all my post-it notes is the other one <laughs> that I used for this one, which is a little bit smaller, but you know, who knows where it is on my desk. It's somewhere on my desk. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. So yeah, so come back next week. We'll play and finish up making these cards. I will probably take a few steps to make it a little bit faster next time. Um, think out maybe some of this, maybe a sentiment or other things that I might use on it and bring it back in. You guys can help me design and create and we'll do it together. Should be fun, right? You like the last one best? Uh, you know what? I'm really liking that one too. I think it might be my favorite one also, but who knows what'll happen once we go to the design part, right? Bringing it into a card. So, hello, it's me again. <laughs> so uh, just some quick, the quick reminder. So again, come back next week, 7 p.m. Eastern time. We'll finish those cards up. Don't forget to check out the uh, online exclusives. Um, and get what you want before they may be gone because who knows how long they'll last. Um, sign up for my stained glass technique class. Oh, I have to show you. How are we going to show you this, the projects? So excited about these. Okay, so I think I showed you the ones that were um, that I've designed and I will be cutting materials for for the cards. The other two designs that I've made, um, uh, it, I didn't. I didn't budget for five designs, so it's going to be three designs. But I'll include the other the other three two in the PDF tutorial, and I will instruct on how to make them uh, in the live classes. So the projects that we'll make, one is, I guess I need to make this part, big one. There we go. Okay. So we're going to make this one. Um, this is one, one of the projects. And then this one, which I absolutely adore. Love that one. I love them all. And then let's get this one on camera here. <laughs> okay now this one has a little light on the inside now you will have to provide your own light i'm just saying but it's a just a fun a fun little um sort of stand up easel card kind of thing and then the two that i've made that um will be in the pdf but we will not make in the class are this one which i just think is so fun a whole different kind of way to do the stained glass look and then last but not least, this one. And I may play with these ideas and do some more in between. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so much fun. <laughs> I have had a blast with this. You guys know I love techniques. And I could just keep playing and playing and playing and making variations. And the more I make, the more I, I think of different ways to do it. And it's just so, so fun. And I love to share it with you, with you guys, too. So um Again, the uh, details, links to sign up for classes are all in the description of this video. And if you ever have any questions, just let me know. I'm here to help. Okay. Happy crafting. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you for spending time with me tonight. I so appreciate it. And uh, would love to know if you liked this sort of style of like craft together, create together, show lots of stuff, but no, no finished cards yet <laughs> method. Um, and if you like it, I'll, you know, I'll do it again. Um, but, uh, do come back next Thursday and we'll finish up and make some cool cards with the pieces that I made today. Um, oh, you weren't going to get the stained glass. Uh, I don't know. This is a pretty special one. I'm just saying <laughs> it's up there with some of my other favorite technique glasses. So you'd like to borrow my brain for a while. <laughs> I'll share it with you. You know, I, I will. <laughs> All right. You're welcome, Donna. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. Um, all right. We'll see you next week. Bye.